E whare e tūnei aue, ka ranga mai, te marae tā koto nei, ka ranga. E te iwi, te iwi, e pai nei, te nga rā kotau katoa. E te waiti, e te waitā, rauranga tirama, a tēnā kōtau. E te whare ariki o tēnei whenua e ngā hapū rangatira. A tēnā kōtau, a tēnā kōtau, tēnā kōtau katsoa. Mō te manāki, a kaore he paenga. E noko wanau i te roro o tōku whare, ko te reo mehi tērā. Whakarongo rua rāku taringa ki te tai o pārengarenga. E a ki ana i te taha o tō mātou waka, ko kura haupō. Ka tītiro, whakete raki atu, ki i muri motu. I hoki maharau, ki tū matahina, me tana mahi rangatira e ora i tiwi. E ai ki aia, te kuaka marangaranga, ko tahi manu i tau ki te tahuna, tau atu, tau atu, tau atu. Ana i te tahi kuaka e mihi ana ki a koutou. Assalamu alaikum. Now you know who I am, because everything you need to know about me is infused in our ancient Māori way of greeting and introducing ourselves. What matters and the fundamentals of our true Māori well-being are all in there. The fundamentals of trade, commerce, and meaningful economic activities are there too. Pepeha, our word for such greetings and salutations, contain the clarity of direction for our journey. Our journey of self-determined well-being and for the meaningful economies that flow from that core. We greet each other according to how we see our place in the world. And not only this current world, but our world across time and space. Across the places and stories of all of those who have gone before. And embedded in our greeting is confidence about our collective future. A place in time yet to come where our descendants of the future live from our ancestors through us and onto those who come after us, our greeting weaves our lines of whakapapa, our genealogy with each other and with the universe. Greeting each other from the knowledge that we are ancestors of the future and we welcome our own dreams and plans for our descendants. So quite a bit got covered in my intro, right? Our pepeha, I think of it as our ancestors' portable technology, our form of greeting, locating us in this indigenous continuum. Pepeha gives us the means to go back and forth across time and space while remaining right here. This Māori time travel is how we identify, how we reaffirm who we are. And at our journey's heart, whakawhanaungatanga, the action of recognizing and strengthening our relationships, it's designed to seek out the connections between us. This expression of our relationships is essential to who we are. The interconnectedness of our collective well-being with each other and with te taiao, the natural world. This is our meaning of life the basis of everything we are and everything we do. And communicating it all in te reo Māori, the Māori language. Speaking, greeting in te reo Māori, we feel that unique vibration of our language. It's so beautifully distinctive, isn't it? This language in itself is part of the time travel portal too. When we speak our own language, speak our words out loud, our phrases, our whakaro, our wawata, our thoughts and dreams, using the language of our ancestors, 
we open up our connections with them. Our reo opens us up to the dreams of our old people, their dreams, their plans for us going back thousands and thousands of years. And we feel the reo vibrations with our wairua. Wairua, the basis of our well-being, our connection with everything in the universe. Our deep spiritual awareness of being. It's our intuition. It's what we sense in the pit of our gut. It's the vibe. I introduce myself by singing first, singing a salutation to this place and to all of you. To let you know, I greet each and every one of you. I see you and your ancestors. This is what we do as women, where I come from, in Muri Whenua, in Te Heka o Te Eka. And these short names carry so many stories. Muri Whenua, the name of our lands and of our ancestors. Te Heku o Te Eka, the tale of the fish, the land at the top of what is called by some the North Island. English can be pretty dry, can't it? Te Heku o Te Eka, the place where we welcome those who've passed on, they pass through our lands and then dive into the ocean for the next part of the journey. We're taught to use the power of our goddess of the mind, Hiningaro. I'd love to read a comic book about her. She enables us to transport ourselves, to actually be in those places when reciting our pepeha. Our minds take us to stand in the same places our ancestors stood. And my pepeha enables me to bring you along with me. We can travel in time and space together. First, we sat on the veranda of one of our wharehui, our meeting houses. The house itself is called Te Reo Mihi, the language of welcome. Our wharehui are built as manifestations of the bodies of our ancestors, with the head at the front, the spine as the pitch of the roof, and inside, the place where we meet, where we sleep, that's the belly. The roro, the veranda, where I've brought you to sit with me, is also the name for the brains. We listen to the waves of Pāringaringa, our ocean, lapping against our ancient waka, Kurahaupo. From there, our gaze was directed to Murimotu and to remembering Tu Matahina, a hero for our people. We watch with him in his time, looking up at the kuaka, the godwits, and learning through his old eyes and their exquisite observation of these birds, kuaka, birds that migrate across the world and back to us every year. We see them now. We see them now through the eyes of two Matahina. Kuaka circling overhead, and then when the leader sees it's safe to land, the flock follows. His famous saying, his whakatauaki, about the birds, was designed to inspire our people to follow his lead to safety, emulating the kuaka as a way to survive. Te kuaka marangaranga ko tahi manui tau ki te tahuna tau atu, tau atu, tau atu. Tu Matahina was a smart man with apparently big feet. He also told our people to walk in his footsteps in the sand to trick the enemy into thinking there was only one person making their escape. His story, his whakatauaki, his proverbial saying, survives across time and space. It survived because it's still so relevant. A real taonga, a real treasure, it inspires us in Tehiku throughout Aotearoa, and now it lands here. It reminds us to explore our own stories and how these can give us direction for our own well-being and action, our own haura. These stories help us to discover what our own haura looks and feels like 
These are our migratory journeys of discovery, just like our kuaka, flying out into the world and returning home, bringing deeper, more connected experiences of who we are and why we are here. Our pipeha are not some sort of cultural fluff, a luxury, a nice to have. They outline requirements, necessities handed down from our tupuna. They are an instruction manual. They tell us how and where to find who we are. They give us a blueprint for our well being. And as a child and adolescent psychiatrist, my everyday work shows me the profound lack of Māori well-being, a profound lack of knowing our identity. Mostly, we don't know much about who we are. And I see such an urgent need to rediscover this. It's sadly no surprise, of course, that we are struggling. Colonisation as we've heard from many of our speakers today, our eloquent speakers, thank you all. Colonization was designed to remove all aspects of our identity that make us Māori in our own country. Colonization continues to limit the ways in which we can fully express being Māori. Our history is not yet taught in schools. Most of us must relearn our own language. Many of our parents and our grandparents were beaten for speaking Māori at school. We've had to reclaim our own lands where we could. We've had to rediscover our stories and ways of thinking, redefine our own self-determined economies, rediscover who we are. It's no wonder then that we struggle to recognize what our true well-being might be. Without knowing who we are, we suffer profound loss and grief, losses without names or validation. Because how do you name the grief and loss of the language and stories of ancestors you don't even know? The evidence of the impact of these losses is ex extraordinarily clear. Māori rates of mental illness, suicide, are massively out of proportion and preventable. And we top the charts in all major illnesses. We have higher infant mortality rates and we still live eight years less than Pākehā. One of the most powerful things that struck me early in my medical training and my career was that our tamariki mokopuna, our Māori children, have much more experience of death. Death of their loved ones, early deaths, deaths of their peers. This is the lived experience of our harrowing statistics. This is not theoretical for us. This is our reality. This is how we grow up learning about well-being. We grow up with a blueprint of being fatalistic about life and death, about normalized early deaths and suicide. And we also learn that we're to blame. We learn to internalize the messaging that if only we were not so lazy or dumb or criminal, we would not be in the state that we're in. We learn that we are the cause of our own early deaths. And along those lines, I've heard so many times from my beautiful tūroro whānau, my patients, oh, I'm a bit of a plastic Māori doc. And the tears I've seen from rangatahi that I assess and work with for the courts when I offer a karakia, a prayer, and they cry and they say, oh, miss, doc, no one ever did a karakia for me before. I've spent my career in medicine, health research, health services development and governance, working to create a safe space to be Māori and to grow our Māori workforce and Māori systems to ensure our development, our way. We have to be proficient in the Pākehā world, do we not? And all that necessary learning about how to navigate the Pākehā world takes time and energy away from learning to be ourselves, to be Māori. 
One thing's clear, the dominant culture do not have to know as much about our world as we do about theirs. They just don't have to. Trying to navigate our own migration home to our identity and all the ways to be Māori like those kuaka is a tough journey. He momo aratini tera. And we face limited resources and racist reminders that we're never going to be good enough. However, um, my research into traumatic brain injury for us as Māori has found that alongside the injury to the organ of the brain, there is a culturally defined injury to our wairua. And I think the same holds true for our economic activities. For our economies to truly reflect and meet the needs of our communities and our descendants, we need to make sure we ground these in our true identities, the source of our well-being. Today is Okua in the Māori lunar cycle, and this is an okoro, as we call it in Tehekun, from 1967, made with instruction from Tahek Busby and Ma Jones by our whanaunga Ted Jones, and I have his permission to show it to you today. Ohua, literally the time of fruition, or of hua, fruits, eggs, a time of abundance, of thinking and action, and the fullness of our mu hina. How fitting then that we bring evidence of the essential role of our Māori identity as being the heart of our economic well-being. He whakakapi māku, we're seeing the work of many generations coming to fruition. We're reclaiming our well-being by restoring our cultural identity. And this is at the heart of economies that have meaning to us and to our descendants. Kuahua te marama, we've come full circle. The time of aratini is reawakened. Si hei te aratini. Kia ora. <laughs> <laughs>